Google Generative AI Overview. In this video, we'll cover a Google AI timeline and also cover the difference between generative AI and predictive AI and the different products aimed at consumers versus enterprises and how you can get started with Google Generative AI. So the story starts when Larry Page and Sergey Brin are developing the Backrub search algorithm at Stanford University. They took a different approach than most search engines, which looked at how many times a word appeared on a page and instead looked at how many times a page was cited by others or linked to by others. As Google search matured, AI and machine learning became key to identifying things like spelling mistakes and the intent of the search that the user had typed in. So for example, if a user typed in giant, whether you're looking for giants in fairy tales or New York Giants football scores. And then as we move into online advertising, we have Google Ads, formerly known as Google AdWords, which launches and uses artificial intelligence to become a fundamental part of the platform, matching adverts and sites together. Google Shopping, formerly Frugal, evolves to provide personal recommendations based on what users are searching for. Around 2003, Google starts to use AdSense for third-party adverts and again is using AI to match online adverts to websites. A little bit later, and we now have Gmail, and Gmail is now using AI to block spam and also to create autocomplete sentences and replies. Modern Android devices now contain dedicated AI accelerator chips and can use them for things like photo editing. You may have seen Magic Eraser, which can remove, move or replace sections of images. Google Maps also uses AI to plan the best routes. And YouTube uses AI to provide video recommendations based on what people have watched previously. And then we get to Google Translate and Google Translate runs almost entirely on AI technology and is one of the poster childs for what you can do with AI, machine learning and translation. Workspace apps use AI for autocomplete features like Help Me Write and other generative AI tools. Play Store uses AI for fraud detection and recommendations. Too many other products and services to mention that all use Google AI, ML and deep learning at their core. Products with billions of daily users. Google Brain and Google AI are a team of researchers studying artificial intelligence, machine learning, Deep Learning and Deep Neural Networks. They are the same team that created the TensorFlow libraries and various projects around images, text, translation, robotics and reinforcement learning. DeepMind is an AI research laboratory acquired by Google. They created a neural network that can learn how to play and win video games. You may have heard of them as far as AlphaZero, AlphaGo and AlphaFold. AlphaFold has discovered over 200 million different protein types for medical research. In 2015, Google created the TensorFlow libraries for AI and ML. They were developed by the Google Brain team. Round about 2016, we also have Cloud TPUs, Tensor Processing Units and Dialogflow a conversational AI platform. But it was in 2017 that the revolution really started in large language models when Google published its Transformers paper. In 2018, we have BERT, the bi-directional encoder representations from Transformers, which was the world's first language model. We then have T5, which is a text-to-text -text transfer transformer, 
which is an encoder decoder large language model. Moving on to Lambda, the language model for dialogue applications, which is specifically trained on dialogue data. In 2021, we have Vertex AI and high fidelity image generation using diffusion models and Palm Pathways Language Model for general use, followed by Calm, the Confident Adaptive Language Model for text generation, and also BARD, a conversational AI service powered by Lambda, and the joining of the Google Brain and DeepMind teams in 2023 to create Google DeepMind. Google's new models include Palm 2, which is a foundational model, as well as SecPalm, which is security focused, and MedPalm, which is medically focused. Google's next generation foundational model is called Gemini. It is multimodal with highly efficient API integrations and is currently still in training. Next, we'll cover how generative AI is different from predictive AI and when you would use one over the other. Predictive AI is used to make classifications or predictions based on input data, whereas generative AI creates new data based on the patterns it has learned from training data. For example, if we showed both models pictures of cats or dogs, we might ask the predictive model, is this picture most likely a cat or a dog? Whereas we might ask the generative model to draw me a picture of a new dog. Google currently has six foundational models, text, chat, code, images, audio, and video. Next, we will compare consumer AI products versus enterprise AI products and when you would use one over the other. Google's consumer AI product is called Bard, and you might ask it questions like, can you plan a short trip or vacation for me? Can you create a new poem or song for me? Can you create me a new gluten-free pancake recipe? Or can you create me a new picture for my project? Google's enterprise AI product is called Vertex AI. And you might ask it more business-focused questions like, how do we manage fraud and security? How do we control our data and not let it leak to competitors? How can we control costs? How can we be accurate and explainable? When using Vertex AI, you have the option of using the Model Garden, which is a list of pre-trained models, the Gen AI Studio for creating new apps, or the Gen AI APIs for connecting to existing apps. In the next section, we'll cover how you can get started with Google Gen AI. Duet AI for Workspace. In this example, we use Help Me Write to create a job post for a regional sales rep. In this example, we'd like an image of a giraffe standing in front of the Eiffel Tower in beautiful watercolours.
And in this example, we're asking Gen AI to create an agenda for a one day sales kickoff and include session descriptions and statuses. Duet AI for cloud. In this example, we're asking Gen AI to write a function to create a Google Cloud storage bucket. And in this example, we're asking Gen AI to help me deploy an app on Cloud Run. And in this example, we're creating an application using AppSheet. So in summary, for Google Generative AI, if you wish to look at consumer products, see BARD. And if you wish to look at enterprise products, see Vertex AI.